hey guys you are welcome back to my youtube channel once again my name is ezenasi in today's video i'll be showing you guys how to cut this beautiful palazzo trouser yes it's very easy and it's also beginners friendly if this is something you're interested in keep on watching let's get to it okay guys i went ahead to fold my fabric into two so yeah i folded this way after folding the fabric into two, I'll go ahead and mark out the starting line, which is going to serve as the waistline. So guys, from the starting line, which is the waistline, I'll mark out my hip depth. The hip depth I'm working with is nine. So I'll just mark out the hip depth, which is 9. So after marking out the hip depth, the next thing I'm going to mark out is the crotch line, the crotch measurement. The crotch measurement I'm working with is 11. So after that, I'll mark out the knee line. The knee line I'm working with is 18. You can make use of 19, depending on how tall the person is. That's what will determine the knee length you're going to make use of. So... I went ahead to mark out the lines. Okay guys, the next thing I did was to measure out the full length of the trouser. The full length I am working with is 45. So I'll just go ahead and measure out the full length. So after measuring out the full length, I'll be taking the hip measurement. The first measurement I'll be taking is the hip measurement. So the hip measurement divided by 4. That's the, what I did. The hip measurement, I divided it into 4. So what I got, I applied it on the hip line. So after that, I added 1 inch allowance. So after doing that, from that 1 inch allowance that I marked out, I connected the line straight up to the waist. Yes, I took that same measurement up to the waistline. So after that, I connected a straight line, connecting from the hip line to the waistline. So that is it. So after that, from that line, I will now measure out the waist measurements. From that line that I connected, I measured out the waist measurements. When I chalked it out, then I added one inch allowance also there so after that i i also measured out the uh, round lap measurements the round lap measurement is going to be on the crotch line that is where i measured out the round lap measurement i'm measuring out the round lap measurement you're going to divide your round lap into two your round lap divided by two that's what you're going to do you're not dividing by four so the round lap divided into two, I marked it out and also added one inch allowance. So from that one inch allowance, I made a curved line connecting to the to the hip measurement. You also how I did it. From the one inch allowance that I added, I connected a curved line from there to that straight line. I connected a line, a curved line from the crotch measurement up to the hip uh, line measurement. Sorry guys, I didn't know that the thing was not recording and I was just busy drawing out things. I didn't know it was not recording. So the thing you guys missed is I said from this crotch measurement we got here, together with the one inch allowance, I drew a line straight down. Then from there, I came in with one inch. Then on this uh, center folding, I also came in by one inch. After coming by one inch, I connected it straight to the hip, and from this waistline, uh, with the measurement and the one inch allowance that I gave, I connected the line straight to the hip line too. Then on this part also, I connected a line. I connected a line. You remember I came in by one inch, so I connected the line from the crotch line down to the one inch that I came in with. So that's just the thing you guys missed, nothing else. Then after that, I now connected a line straight to the full length of the trouser. 
I did the same thing on also the other side. I connected the straight line down to the, to the full length of the trouser. So that's all. So I'll just go ahead and cut out the front part. Then after that, we'll now use it to trace out the back. For me, I am not going to be putting a dart on this trouser. But if you want to put your dart, you can go ahead and do that. In order to put your dart, you just measure out your bust pattern on the waistline. And also come in by half inch on the both side for the dart leg. Then from there, you now come down uh, with four inches for the length of the dart. So that's all on how you're going to put your dart. But I'm not going to be putting that on my own. So guys, that's it. I'll just go ahead and cut out. So guys, after cutting it out, I went ahead to pin the fabric down with my office pin because the material is kind of light, so it's always moving around. So I decided to pin it down before I use it to trace out the back. Okay guys, I've also gone ahead to fold the back part of the trousers. So uh, if you notice, I folded the back wider than the way I folded the front because at the back there are a lot of things to be done there so it has to be wider. So on the waistline for the back, I came up with two inches on the crotch part yes i came up with two inches the reason you come up with two inches is for it to help look decent like when you wear the trouser if you want to bend your 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 back will not be showing so it will cover up very well so after coming up with two inches on that part on the crotch line i came out with two inches also yes i also came out with two inches on that part so after doing that, on the thigh length, that's your knee length, I also came out with one inch on that part. On the knee line for the back, I came out with one inch. So after, so after that, I also came out with one inch on the hip line for the back. Then on the waistline, I also measured out one inch. So mostly in trousers, it's always at the back that they usually add allowance. Those allowance I added in the front is just because the fabric is not very, very stretchy. That's the reason I also added um, some allowance in the front. But most of the time, if it is a stretchy material, you don't even need allowance for the front. The allowance of trouser is always at the back that's why that's where they always impute allowances in trousers it's always at the back so so after that i went ahead to connect my lines So from that two inches that I came up with from the waistline, I will just mark a slanted line down to the to the uh, waist part, just this way. It has to be a slant line. It doesn't have to be curved. I will just mark a slant line down to the waist line. So guys, that is it. So this one inch I marked out on the knee length, I will still take that one one inch down to the full length of the trouser. I'll just mark one one inch down to the full length of the trouser and that is it for the back part the next thing we're going to do is to cut out <laughs> On the folded part of the waistline at the back, I also measured out half inch allowance. Yes, I measured out half inch allowance. The reason I'm adding all these allowances is because this material is not stretchy. So I don't want anything that is going to uh, make the trouser not to 
enter me very well. So that is the reason I added just half inch allowance. Yes. The half inch allowance I added is just on the waist part, the folded part of the waist. It didn't, I didn't take it down to the hippo, just on the waist part. Just see the way I cut it out. I was just I just cut out the half inch from the waist then while coming down to the hip I took in my hand again so that is it so guys that is it for the front and the back so the next thing I'll do is just to go over to my sewing machine and show you guys how you're going to join it so that it will come out very very perfect okay guys the first thing I did was to sew up the crotch line for both the front and the back Yes, this is it. I've sewed up the crotch line. I just sewed in with just like a half inch. Yes, for both the front and the back part. So the next thing I'm going to sew now is just to sew in the the side, the to the two sides of the trouser. I'll just sew in with with um one and a half inch sewing allowance, starting from the waist down to the full length of the trouser on the right side of the trouser i will not be i will give like seven inches allowance downward for the zipper for where i'm going to attach the zip so i'll just go ahead to my sewing machine and sew in with one and a half inch allowance all right guys okay guys i'm done joining these the two sides of the trousers so the next thing i'm going to do now is to join this crotch line Yes, the crotch parts, I'll join it straight down to the length of the trouser. I'll just hold it together this way and join with half inch or one inch. But from the crotch, I'll start with half inch and then sew down. Maybe while sewing, I'll just be bringing my hand in to one inch. So that's how I'm going to do it. I'll just show you, sew it and show you guys. Okay, guys, I've also gone on. I've also gone ahead to cut out the waistband. The waistband I cut out is uh, 3 inches on fold. Then the length is, I used my waist measurement to cut out the length of the band. And I also added some like 1 inches allowance. I also went ahead to add interfacing. This one is totally optional. But it helps make the band to be very firm. So I'll just go ahead to my sewing machine and sew in the band on the trousers. Okay guys, I'm done stitching everything. I also went ahead to fold in the down part of the trousers. Yes, and I've also added my zip. This is what it looks like. I've added everything that I need to add. And this is it for this tutorial. That's the end of the tutorial. Guys, please, if you find this video helpful, just do well to give this video a thumbs up and if you're yet to subscribe to my channel please do so also turn on your notification bell so that you'll be notified each time i upload a new video thank you guys for watching see you all in my next video ciao and god bless you all